trust in me How come you're only brother How come you're only friend In the world we can pretend we don't exist Picture this And I will make it better And you can make it better When you breathe in Hey sweet people and welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time here, welcome especially. I'm Sally and I'm so glad you stopped by. I am so happy to be back. I took a little break. I am filming this probably two weeks after the release of my last video. It'll be like three weeks once it comes out. But I was blessed with the opportunity to go to Italy with my best friends from college and um, had just the most amazing trip. I'm so grateful for it. So grateful to my friend Liz who planned the entire trip and um, it was just flawless. Like it was so relaxing to be able to show up and essentially just do what I was told and have a great time and not have to worry about the details. So thank you Liz and thank you to all of my sweet friends who also went on the trip feeling so grateful. But this had me thinking about blood sugar regulation while traveling because it's something I've traveled, tra well, it's something I've struggled with a lot in the past, but I feel like I did a pretty good job of on this trip. And it's something that I know a lot of other people struggle with as well. So I'm gonna dive into some tips to help you keep your blood sugar regulated while traveling. Just understand that some of this is a little bit specific to Italy where we were, um, but of course there's gonna be carryover into Europe as a whole and then just into travel as a whole. But okay, without further ado, first tip is going to be to bring airplane snacks. And this might seem obvious, except for me, I'm like, oh, let me just be economical. On the airplane, they provide snacks. I don't need to bring my own. However, when you get there and you think about it, everything they're providing is super high carb, really low in protein, and generally going to be pretty low in fat as well, or it's certainly not the kinds of fat you want to be putting in your body. So um, it might be like on shorter flights, I know you have the options. Of, usually it's like sun chips, if you're flying with Delta sun chips, Biscoff cookies, which, are so delicious and um, almonds or like a granola bar. And no shame in like having some of those things. I'm all about balance. However, if you're eating that on its own, you are likely to initiate the blood sugar roller coaster. And so it's tremendously helpful to bring something like, um, I brought prosciutto and then I felt really fancy on the airplane, just like eating some prosciutto. Um, but you can go to like Trader Joe's, they have lots of like packaged higher quality cured meats that can be great to be, bring along, something like beef jerky. Um, whatever high protein snack you like, plan to bring some on the airplane and then maybe something like fresh fruit. I also brought a couple apples because, um, well, I had access to carbohydrates. Those aren't generally carbohydrates that are gonna make my body feel their best. And it's also nice to have something that's hydrating at the same time since we can get so dehydrated on airplanes. Um, so that's tip number one. Tip number two is going to be to come prepared with morning protein. Now, you may have heard it as well. A lot of people told me like Europeans don't really eat breakfast. Now, I don't think that's true. I was doing some of my own research Plenty of Europeans eat breakfast. They're just usually doing it at home. Um, and they'll eat things like, you know, yogurt and fruit or toast or something like that. All great things. Big fan of yogurt. One tip is go to the market, grab some yogurt, especially if you're gonna be in one place for like a prolonged period of time and you have a fridge, get some yogurt and just first thing, have a little bit of that each morning so that then you can go out, you can grab your pastry, you can grab some coffee um, and you are set, you are good to go. However, if you don't want to do that or if you're moving around more, a great tip is going to be to um, get like, again, beef sticks or whatever high protein snack you like. Um, I know a lot of y'all like the chomps. Those are great to bring while you travel. And then Epic makes these meat bars. My friend Elisha brought some of these meat bars along, which I thought was really smart. They're not my thing because a lot of them have like fruit in them and that throws me off. Um, but she had these like bison bars. It's all high quality, grass fed, pasture raised, all of that stuff. And she would just eat that before we went out so that she at least had some protein taken care of. And then we could get again, like a pastry without worrying about the blood sugar roller coaster, which takes us into our next point, that of thinking through your coffee game and taking advantage of things like cappuccinos. Um, so, I learned that 
in Italy at least, and I think a lot of places in Europe, you would traditionally have like a cappuccino for breakfast um, or at breakfast time, but you will only have espresso later on in the day. Like you're not going to have something with milk in it. Uh, and I just decided right off the bat, okay, I don't care. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good espresso. However, um, it's nice, not only in the morning, but throughout the day, if you need a little snack to get a cappuccino, because even if it's only like six to eight ounces of milk, you're still getting six to eight ounces, excuse me, six to eight grams of protein in with that. So just think it through. If you are going to go get a coffee, that's a great opportunity to get a little extra protein in your diet. Have it maybe with a pastry again, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, and that can help to keep everything balanced and, um, prevent as much shenanigans throughout the day. Of course, bearing in mind though that people are gonna metabolize caffeine differently. And, um, you know, generally speaking, we, we never want to eat or drink caffeine on an empty stomach. Um, and first thing in the morning, I'd still encourage you to have something more than just coffee. Okay, I have been rambling, um, but just think through the milk, think through that in the coffee and use that to your advantage. Next thing is going to be Aperitivo, to take advantage of Aperitivo. I think what that technically is, is like you, if you order a drink, um, traditionally they will give you like a small snack with that drink. However, also at that time is when you would frequently have, this is like earlier in the evening, you would frequently have what we call charcuterie. They call it like tagli, taglieri, I think. If someone is Italian or anything like that, please let me know. Just, I feel like I'm butchering all of this. Just let me know in the description. That's okay, or in the comment section. But all of that goes to say, this is often a time where you might get that little charcuterie board. You're gonna have some cured meats and you're gonna have some tea, some cheese. Highly encourage y'all to take advantage of this. First of all, because dinner is usually later in the evening. And so you have to wait for a while. Um, but also because this is a great time to kind of stock up on some protein. If later on you wanna have something that's a little bit more carbohydrate heavy. So I loved it. I would just eat the cheese, eat the meat. Um, and then we'd go to dinner afterwards and this allowed me more flexibility to get something that was more pasta focused um, without as much protein necessarily. Which takes me into the next point, which is to split meals. Um, split meals with friends or to like one person get one thing, one person get another thing, or um, plan to like save leftovers for the next day. Um, reason being, in Italy at least, generally speaking, the meal is gonna be eaten in courses. And you're first going to have like a pasta course, where there's like the, the starter course, then you might have pasta. And then after that, um, you're gonna have meat. They don't tend to come together unless you're getting like pasta bolognese or has like ragu on it and that will have meat in it and so that's good but assuming you want to try other pastas it can be really advantageous to have one person get a pasta one person get a dish with meat um, and then you're gonna have more than enough food if you split those two things you can try the yummy pasta but you have plenty of protein and um, yeah it was just really helpful for me once I figured that out because um, try more stuff you get plenty of food and balanced meal okay next thing and last point is going to be order the bigger meat entrees and then just save them for the next day, which ties into the previous point and into um, one of the earlier ones in terms of having yourself prepared with the morning protein. Something I loved is that you could even order, it could be an entree or you could get a starter that was like tartare or carpaccio. Loved these, especially love the carpaccio. If you don't know what that is, it is beef that is sliced really, really thinly. You can also do it with fish and it has some acid on it, but it's raw essentially it might be cooked with the acid but very subtly so it's essentially raw um as long as you're getting high quality beef great way to get some amazing nutrients in because when we eat beef red meat that is not um cooked all the way through that actually preserves the integrity of more of the nutrients um Okay, so anyways, you can get a meat entree or a meat appetizer, eat some of it, you're gonna have plenty, and then save some for the next day so you can have it for breakfast or snack on it um, in between meals, especially if you're walking around a lot, which might feel a little silly, but there's just something so fun about pulling some meat out, having a little snack. Um, we have very funny pictures of a few of the girls on the trip sitting on the train one morning pulling out the leftovers of our Florentine snake steak and just like chowing down. There was this older Italian couple that didn't speak any English on the other side of the train um, watching them just chow down and they look over and they managed to be like, is that, 
is that meat was like the only English they could say. And the girls were like, yes. And they busted out laughing, but made their day. Everyone enjoyed our Florentine steak. And I know this has been a chatty video, but that's all I have. Hopefully it's helpful. Uh, comment your questions. Comment your questions, comments, concerns down below. I'm getting back into the hang of it. Okay.